let me share with you how this course is going to help you. And this is uh, from our observations of dealing with more than 200 plus organizations and seeing what are the gaps that we have experienced uh, in organization and how this course could be of help. I think the first part is uh, when students move from academic institutions to the practitioner's world of business, which is often chaotic, volatile and complex, we feel that you really don't have a platform really bridges that gap from the academic institutions to the professional practitioner's world. And what happens is, um, at best, you tend to get an induction in products and services of the organization, a bit about how the organization works in terms of culture, and then you're left to uh, learn by trial and error on the job. If you're lucky, you tend to get a great boss who becomes a mentor and your learning curve really goes up. But many times it's a trial and error situation is what we have observed. And how this comes in your way is between three to eight years when you are moving into responsible uh, positions and you have your task at hand has become far more complex. Your skill sets have not really grown up to, to match the level of complexity that you need to handle. And the reason is because the academic knowledge you have got has not really got cross fertilized with the practical application oriented knowledge that you are gaining. It's pretty much sits on top of that. It's not integrated or metamorphized into a thinking that you can, you can deal with. So what happens is you're at a life stage where you can influence the organization now because you are three to eight years in the system. You're supposed to lead the organization. You're supposed to take decisions, but your ability to see the problem and opportunity and to handle it, it's not really in line with your influential power. So what happens is when you join the organization, your ability to spot the problem and opportunity is far higher because you've got a fresh mind, you're looking at things very objectively, but at that point of time, you can't influence the system. But now between three to eight years, you have the ability to influence, but this, this handicap of not completely able to see the problem and opportunity comes in the way and we feel it's a huge opportunity loss. And the reason is because one, you need to have a lens to hold the entire picture in your head of the organization and its environment. That's the organizational context as well as the, the market context, the consumer, the competitive context. And so you need to have that whole picture in your mind and you need to have a lens to look at it, which allows you to get a sense of what is the cause and what is the effect and which part of the puzzle is creating the problem or which part of the puzzle needs to be tinkered or changed or inducted in to solve the situation. And if that is not there, what happens is that you tend to get into a firefighting kind of a mode and you're constantly tactical in your thinking and not applying a strategic perspective because of this lack of the overall lens as well as to spot the individual issues specifically. And we feel this is the transition time where either, you know, if you, if you have the skill sets, you're going to move into a position of to lead and inspire your team as well as the organization by taking good decisions because that's what the heart of you know a leadership is if not you could potentially become the cog in the wheel you become part of the system you become operationally great and strategically your muscles have not really developed so what this the human centered thinking allows is to give this overall framework for you to see the situation the entire context of the organization your consumer and the competitive context and allows you to understand what part of the puzzle needs to be moved and this human centered thinking gives you a overall lens to look at the issues and helps you to spot the cause and effect and identify the problems and the opportunities to take your decisions better. It also helps you because if you, when you have this framework at, in the last many years, you're also uh, reading a lot, you're experiencing a lot, you, you may be taking a multiple uh, courses in different subjects. And all of this thing at this point of time is scattered and you're not able to bring it to the point of impact. But with this framework, it actually integrates all your thinking. And what happens is that there is a compounding effect in the knowledge that you have and in the way you can apply it to the business opportunities and challenges that you're facing. The second part is that the business has become far more disruptive. And I would say it, it is constantly in a disruptive environment. And if you look at some of the mega forces which disrupts it from political like the way uh, TikTok as a company is facing today, you know, between markets of India and US and the geopolitical issues with uh, China, etc. I mean, those kind of disruptions happens. And then there are um, 
environmental and economic disruptions like happening through COVID. There is constant uh, competitive disruptions that happens. There are new players constantly coming in and consumers don't, uh, and consumers are far more evolved and digitally connected today. Uh, they're constantly uh, talking to each other. They don't view organizations from a, I mean, putting you on a pedestal. Uh, they're far more skeptical. And these are all challenges that you're constantly faced with. And what happens is that a good process orientation helps you to navigate the organization when times are really great. But in uncertain situations, you need principles and philosophies to look at it. And then you use that lens to adapt to the situation. So for instance, customer centricity is a philosophy or is a principle. So whenever you have a problem, you're, you're putting the question by saying that, hey, let me go back to that foundational pillar and ask, am I adding value to my customer? What is that I can do better? So that is a way of looking at principles and philosophy and adapting it to a situation rather than a set of processes which really works when the situation is good. So what human-centered thinking allows is that it not only provides you with a process, uh, but it, it provides you with principles and philosophies to look at the issue and adapt it to the situation.